Please down for the younger ones downstairs. Everybody else, will you take your Bible turn to 1 Peter chapter 4. 1 Peter chapter 4. And uh, find your way there. And uh, Pastor David is, is uh, he's got several uh, hand well, one handout here. He's kind of passing down the row here. If uh, you're interested in taking some notes, this may be a help to you. Message this morning is a little bit different. Um, and I, I'm used to just plugging into a passage and plowing through. Um, but uh, we're doing kind of a topical study. And we started it last week with the uh, study of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And, and I suppose we might even say, oh boy, Pastor Joel, you know, you're really going to step in it this time. Uh, and, and I know the, the, a study on the gifts of the Spirit uh, can be uh, controversial to some, and, uh, but we want to do our best to just see exactly what the Bible says and do our best to interpret it uh, and, so, uh, and, and apply it to our lives. It is important for us to know that we have been given a gift and that that gift is to be used for his purpose in the context of the local church. And, uh, and Pastor David's going to copy a couple more, so I think they're coming back uh, for you. Uh, so it's important for us to recognize that. I have a gift, you have a gift, God has given it to you. If you belong to the Lord Jesus Christ and His Holy Spirit lives inside of you, then you have been given a gift, or maybe more than one, uh, that you are to use in the context of the local church. And if you don't use it in the context of the local church, then the church misses out and others miss out. Uh, and you miss out, by the way, when you don't exercise the gift that God has given to you. And so a lot of us are thinking, okay, I, I'd like to, I want to, but Pastor Joel, I don't know what that gift is. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Where do I fit in? How do I plug into to the local church? And how do I uh, allow God to use me in this place, I don't know what my gift is. And so we're going to kind of walk through some of the gifts of the Spirit, the ones that we have recorded for us in Scripture. We're going to walk through these, and uh, we'll start this Sunday today, and the Lord willing, we'll finish next Sunday uh, as uh, we look at more of them. There are several that Scripture uh, lays out for us, and I think... Uh, it's important for us also to recognize that there's no one passage of Scripture that records them all. Uh, you can look in 1 Corinthians 12, and you'll find a lengthy list there. You can look in Ephesians 4, and you'll find some recorded there. You can look in Romans chapter 12, you'll find several there. You can look here in 1 Peter, you'll find some there recorded as well. And there are several passages uh, that, that give us an indication of some of the gifts of the Spirit. And so since they're not all recorded in one place, we have to, we, we can't be dogmatic about how many there are, okay? Now, I, I, I've read in uh, plenty of commentaries and theologians, and, uh, and they discuss this, and they, some of them say there are 19 gifts. There are 19 gifts of the Spirit. And some will say, no, there are 23. And others will say there are only 17 gifts of the Spirit because some of those are the same ones. They just use different words. And, and really, theologians are all over on this thing. But the point is, they're gifts that God gives by His Holy Spirit at His di discretion for His purpose. And there are different ones. And that's what we can gain from Scripture. There are different ones. And there are some that are listed for us, and so we're going to do our best to, uh, to kind of walk through the ones that are listed. Um, but uh, we're, we're going to be careful also not to just be so dogmatic uh, that there isn't room for God's Holy Spirit uh, to interpret it for us as it's His job anyway. Okay? So, in 1 Peter chapter 4, I'm going to start reading here in verse number 10. And there are some gifts that are mentioned in uh, verses 7, 8, 9, but I want to start here in verse 10 and 11. If you'll find your way there, the Bible says this, As every man hath received the gift, even so minister the same one to another 
as good stewards of the, of the manifold grace of God. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. If any man minister, let him do it as of the ability which God giveth, that God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Father, I pray that you'd help us now in these moments to understand these words before us and many other scriptures that we'll be looking at as well. We pray that your Holy Spirit would do a divine, supernatural work in our hearts today and draw us near to yourself. May we make decisions as we ought to. Give us encouragement as we need it. Give us conviction as is necessary. We pray that you'd receive glory in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, um, that verse 10, as every man hath received the gift. We touched on this last time. Every man hath received the gift. Uh, so you can't, you can't be a part of the body of Christ. You can't be a Christian and say, I'm saved, I have the Holy Spirit, and say, but I don't have a gift, I can't serve. You can't do that. Uh, and and uh, being a part of the body of Christ is not an, an observational thing. You don't just sit back and watch and, and observe what everybody else is doing. God has given you a gift, and he expects you to use it. And so that's what he says there. As every man hath received the gift, even so minister the same one to another. And what do we do with these gifts? We minister to one another. Um, and notice what it says there at the end of verse 10. As stewards of the manifold grace of God. Everybody... Uh, wants to be a good steward, or you want a good steward taking care of what belongs to you. If you have uh, some kind of investment, uh, you, you uh, place your investments in the hands of the investors, uh, trusting that they will steward well what you are giving to them so that there's some kind of a return. And God has given you a gift. He has given you a divine ability. We talked about it last time. And, and your responsibility is to discover what that is and to be a good steward of that gift. That is to use that gift to bring return for Him, for His glory. Lord, what can I do for you that your investment in me would bring profit? That's the idea. And so uh, are you living as a Christian that is fruitful, that is profitable for God. What is your gift and are you using it for him? If you're not a good steward, then what do you do? You bury it. You hide it away. You refuse to use it. You decide I don't want to. I don't feel like it. I don't feel qualified. It's just not me. And as a result, uh, the church misses out. God is not glorified. And you suffer. Because the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, and peace. And what we would rather do sometimes is just sulk in our bitterness, in our selfishness, and we'd rather just focus on me and hope somebody ministers to me. And then we wonder why we're so miserable in life. When God has given you a gift to minister to others, it's time for you to get the focus off of you and start glorifying God by exercising your gift to serve other people. And you know what the result is? Love and joy and peace. You want joy in your life? It's going to bubble over when you serve God. But when you hold it for yourself, then you won't have that joy. And so uh, I would propose to you that it is time to find your gift and exercise that gift. So uh, let's be good stewards of the manifold grace of God. Now, in verse 11, we see what would seem to be two categories of the gifts here. And I think it fits well. And so let's look at these two categories in verse 11. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. If any man minister, let him do it as of the ability which God giveth. Two kinds of gifts here. Some are speaking gifts. Some are serving or ministering gifts. 
I think it's a good division, and we'll see that as we look at some of the other lists in Scripture to see what these, which gifts are listed out. They would fall into either a speaking category or into a serving category. Now, notice that it is, if you do speak, you speak as the oracles of God. In other words, as the, the words or as the speech that God gives. You speak what God gives you to speak. You don't speak what's in your mind and in your vast wisdom and your experiences, but you give from what God gives. That's how it works. This is the same with the serving gifts. If any man minister or serve, let him do it as of the ability which God giveth. See, and this is where we get into trouble because we say, I just can't serve. Because I am too tired, I don't have the resources, I don't have the ability. But if you're relying on your own ability to serve, then you're not using the spiritual gift that God has given to you because He gives the ability. It doesn't come from you. And so uh, we talked about it last time that a spiritual gift is a divine enabling and so it's important for us, we're, we're, it'll be easy when we list these gifts, it'll be easy for us to say, well, I think that's kind of my personality. I think that's kind of the way I am. And that's fine. But realize that one of the, one of the benefits of exercising the gift of the Spirit that God has given to you is that you'll be like Christ, not like you. So to yield to Him and to yield to His Spirit and allow Him to produce through you may look entirely different than what you think it does. Because you're looking for your own talents and your own flesh and your own ability when God is saying, no, I don't want that. I'm going to give you what I want you to do. And so it's important for us to recognize these gifts and abilities come from God, not from our flesh. Does that mean there's not tendencies uh, and, and uh, things that bring us, uh, that, that, that we, we experience the joy of the Lord? No, I, we're going to see that as we kind of work these gifts out. But recognize, this is, this is from God. It's from God. And it's not your talent. It's not your ability. It's His that He gives to you. So, two categories, speaking gifts and serving gifts. I almost said tomorrow. Next week, we'll talk about... You can come back tomorrow if you want. Uh, next week, we'll talk about the serving gifts. Today, we're going to talk about the speaking gifts. And, uh, and, and you might think to yourself, I just, you know, I'm, I don't think uh, this, will, this message will be for me, Pastor Joel, because I'm not, I don't think I have a speaking gift. Oh, my. Yes, you do. I mean, you, you, it's hard sometimes to get the service started because everybody's gabba, 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 gabba. You know, everybody's talking all the time. Yeah, you speak and I speak. We've all, we all have the gift of gab to some degree, okay? So... How does God want us to use that, and, and specifically, what kind of gift maybe has God given to us? Does everybody have a speaking gift? No, but I would venture to say that a lot of you do, okay? A lot of you do. So let's look at some of these gifts and see uh, what we can discover now. On your paper, I've got a list of these gifts that we're going to kind of walk through, and by God's grace, we'll be, we'll be able to survey these gifts. We won't dig into each of them in depth but we're going to look at them and see what God's Word says uh, and get just kind of a survey so that you can evaluate and say, wow, I wonder if God has given to me this gift, and I wonder how I can use that uh, to edify the body of Christ and to produce Christ-likeness in myself and in others. So let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and this is um, the classic passage, a classic chapter on the, on the gifts of the Spirit. Uh, we see many gifts listed here, and we spent a, a, a good amount of time last Sunday looking at the first uh, seven or eight verses there. But I want you to look with me at verse number, uh, let's, let's look at verse seven. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. We saw that last time. Uh, so the manifestation or the, uh, the visualization of the, of the gifts of the Spirit, the way that the Spirit actually shows Himself in our lives, is given to every man, every individual, to profit with all. That's to profit the church, 
to edify the church and everyone in it. Verse 8, for to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit. We're going to look at these two here together. First we'll look at knowledge uh, and, uh, and then we'll look at wisdom. These two are, I think, very closely related. Uh, the gift of knowledge. This seems to be a, uh, a gift of deep study. A gift of deep study. Have you ever met somebody, uh, a Christian, and you've thought to yourself, wow, they know the Bible. Wow. I mean, they, they know those verses, and they just pull them out, and it just goes... Wow, that is incredible. And God gives to some a special gift of knowledge. Now, in some cases, I think especially during the first church, this may have even included a supernatural divine revelation. We don't see that today. Um, but this, this knowledge, uh, a, a kind of a deep study, a deep dive into the information that God has given to us specifically in His Word. And I think some people have this gift. Now, this does not mean that if you would say, well, I don't have the gift, that you don't have to study. Uh-uh. Don't play that game, okay? It doesn't work that way. Uh, the, the, the Bible's very clear in 2 Timothy 2.15, study to show thyself approved unto God, okay? So it is important for us all to study the Word. But God gives a gift to some, to be able to do this deep dive and relay this information to others. These, these kind of individuals may uh, write books. Uh, they, they may do uh, extensive teaching. Uh, and they may help with a lot of uh, study for other people. Uh, I would find that, that these kind of individuals uh, really don't like curriculum that's already written out for them. They'd rather just dig in themselves and make their own curriculum. I mean, they just dig, they love to study the Word. And, and these kind of individuals are driven to see exactly what the Bible says. Uh, and and I, when I think of uh, this gift, I think of Pastor Phil. You know, Pastor Phil does a deep dive into the Word. When he's studying a topic, he looks at every single place in Scripture that that Greek or Hebrew word occurs. And he studies it. He's looking at every one there. And he really digs in. If you've ever read any of the stuff that he's written, you'll see that God has given that man the gift of knowledge. He writes excellently. You know, it's interesting. His preaching is a little bit different style, isn't it? It's a different style, and some would find it hard to learn from his teaching and preaching because he's so deep sometimes. It's very interesting. His gift is knowledge. God has given to him that, that knowledge, that ability. Now, we see these gifts manifest in Jesus Christ. They're to produce Christ-likeness. Have you ever thought about Jesus as having a gift of knowledge? He does. He did. He does today. Think about Jesus as a 12-year-old boy. Do you remember the story? There's Jesus in the temple. And he is discussing the scriptures with the doctors and the teachers. And, and they're amazed at his answers and at his knowledge about the scriptures. And he's so into it that he stays right there. Mom and dad have left. You know, Mary and Joseph, they're on their way home. And, and then suddenly they realize, wait a minute. We don't have the Son of God with us. This is a problem. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. And they panic, you know, and they go back. And where do they find Jesus? Oh, he's in the temple. And he's talking with the doctors. He's talking with the teachers. And he's reasoning with them. And they're amazed at what he's saying. And he says, Mom, Dad, didn't you know I should be about my father's business? You know, I mean, this is, this is, this is my, my wheelhouse. This is my sweet spot. And that's where Jesus was. He had this, this gift of knowledge, certainly. In fact, these gifts um, display the, the characteristics of Christ in us as well. And so somebody with this gift of knowledge uh, really shows that, uh, displays Christ-likeness in that way. How about wisdom? Wisdom, also in that verse there, um, it says a word of wisdom. 
Wisdom seems to be this practical application of the truth of God. And it's interesting because I think a person with the gift of knowledge may not have necessarily this gift of wisdom. They, they do this deep dive, the people with knowledge, they do this deep dive into the scriptures. And, and in fact, they, they do that so much that they almost forget to apply it. You know, it's just, oh, did you get this? This is really exciting truth. Look at this. See this parallel? Wow, this is exciting and this is fantastic. And it's great. But then you have, then you have folks that Christ has given this gift of wisdom. They come along and they, and they say, yeah, but, but this is how that applies to our lives today. See, and, and this is how it affects how we live right now. And these ones would make good counselors. Uh, they're, they're good at just... Uh, reasoning with people and helping people, taking the, the Bible, the simple truths of Scripture, and saying, this is what you need today in this situation. And you need to apply this now. And they're, they're really good at using the, the knowledge of God, the, the Word of God, and making that real-life application in daily lives. And of course, we see this displayed in Jesus as well. If you read the Sermon on the Mount, you think of uh, how Jesus applied scriptural principles to the people. You know, and he's, and he's telling them, if somebody takes your coat, you, you, you just let them have it. You know, you, you give them another one. <laughs> if, somebody, if somebody compels you to walk one mile, you walk with them too. He's really practical, very practical. Just brings it right down to the ground floor where we all live, where the rubber meets the road. Jesus displayed that excellently. And, and a good teacher uh, will be able to, to uh, apply that as well. But there are some that are especially gifted in this, in this way. Uh, really, a, a counseling ministry um, would be someone with the gift of wisdom. Teachers don't necessarily have that gift, but a counselor would. Uh, and they would, they would really dig into that, and they'd be very useful uh, in that sense. And so you're thinking to yourself, I wonder, you know, does, does God give me, has God given me this ability to do a deep dive study, dig into the scriptures and study? Has God given me the ability to, to maybe apply scriptures practically and help people through these real life situations that they find themselves in? Can I in some way actively use my gift of knowledge or, or wisdom to benefit the church. And, and if that's you, you're going to look for that ministry and you're going to find it. I can think of some ways here in our own church uh, where uh, especially the, the counseling kind of ministry. You know, we have the RU program and on, on a Friday nights we get into small groups and we get working through some real situations in life. And you know what we need? We need some individuals that are gifted with wisdom to be able to apply the scriptures and help us out. That's what we need. And maybe God has given you that gift and maybe it's time to get involved in that way somehow. Or maybe there's something else. You need to get into a discipleship where you're, you're meeting with somebody else that's new in the faith and you're helping them, coming right alongside them, talking with them every week and saying, hey, this is, this is what the Bible says. This is what you need to do. This is what it says. Or maybe it's a, it's a deep dive ministry that God has given you. I don't want to get too bogged down because you're looking at all those things. You say, Pastor Joel, you better keep it moving because we've got a lot to do. That's right. That's right. So uh, before we move on from this, though, in 1 Corinthians 2, we see both of these gifts. In 1 Corinthians 2, I want you to notice this wisdom and this knowledge is not produced by you as an individual. It's not your experience. It's not what you can dig up from the recesses of your deep brain, okay? These things come from God. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse number 10. But God hath revealed them unto us by His Spirit. For the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of man, save the Spirit of man which is in him? Even so, the things of God knoweth no man but the Spirit of God. Now, we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given unto us of God. Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but 
the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for their foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they're spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual, that's filled with the Spirit, judgeth all things. Yet he himself is judged of no man. For who hath known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Wow. So you can see right there, this is a gift of God. And a person with the gift of wisdom or the gift of knowledge is uh, going to recognize and utilize uh, the Holy Spirit of God and the wisdom that he gives. All right, let's move on to prophecy. Prophecy. The next uh, gift that we want to look at, this is found in 1 Corinthians 12, uh, where we were before, and uh, verse number 10. I know you might be flipping pages, turn, turning all over the place. It says, to another, working of miracles, to another, prophecy. There it is, prophecy, one of the gifts of the Spirit. We see it also in Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12, and I'll just look there quickly. <laughs> If I can turn there quickly, I'm going the wrong direction in the Bible. Here we go. Romans 12 and uh, verse number 6. The Bible says, Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, whether prophecy, let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith. We sit also in Ephesians 4.11, another listing of some of the gifts of, the, of Christ to the church seems to be dovetailing right with the gifts of the Spirit. In Ephesians 4.11, it says, He gave some apostles, some prophets, some prophets. Uh, so here again, prophecy. Now, what is prophecy? Well, this is an interesting topic. We can really talk a lot about prophecy. Uh, oftentimes, immediately we think of prophecy like it's, it's uh, somebody who receives this special revelation, special message from God, and often it has something to do with the future. And that's what we think of. But in the context of Scripture, it's not always that way. In fact, more often than not, it's not talking about future events. We think of it as foretelling, but it seems to be, we could say, forth-telling. Prophecy is when a person has been given the, the ability to boldly proclaim a message from God. And, and you think of some of the prophets of the Old Testament. Uh, you know, you, you think of your, your uh, Elijah's, you know. Uh, Elijah gets up there and he's just, he just belted out. You think of John the Baptist. You know, John the Baptist, you know, uh, 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 talking to the, to the king there, uh, Herod, and telling him, you're wrong, buddy. And he proclaims boldly the message from God. And he's not afraid. I, I think this, this gift uh, could be the gift of preaching. Preaching is different than teaching. Uh, preaching is, is boldly proclaiming a message from God. When, when a man stands up and says, Thus saith the Lord. You know, that's, oh my, okay. This is an authoritative message from God himself. And the only authority that any man has to do that is from this book. Okay? This book right here, the completed revelation from God. We have it. We don't have to go seeking for some special, special prophecy, special message. We've been given the full message that God wants for us here in the Bible. And so a man today will stand up and boldly preach and proclaim the message of, of God for the hearers. Well, Jesus did this. Jesus did this. Uh, and, and in fact, when he was given the opportunity in the synagogue. He opened the scriptures to Isaiah and, uh, and he said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me to preach. And that's what he did. That's what he did. He boldly proclaimed, this is the message from God. And we don't just hem and haw about this. You know, this there's, there's, there's no gray area here. You know, prophets don't see a whole lot of Gray, everything's black and white. You know, this is what the Bible says. That's how it is, you know, and, and they just proclaim it. Uh, sometimes we'll have special speakers, evangelists that may come through. We'll talk about evangelism in a bit. Uh, but uh, they'll come through and, and they, just, they just pick out a, a passage and they just thunder it from the pulpit. 
because God has given them this gift of prophecy or, or preaching in that sense. Now, in 1 Corinthians 14, we see a lot about the gift of prophecy uh, in opposition to the gift of tongues. Uh, 1 Corinthians 14, and look with me at verse 3. It says, But he that prophesieth speaketh unto men to edification, to exhortation, and to comfort. Okay, edification, building up uh, the church, building up the believers, you know, motivating them with persuasive speech, boldly proclaiming the words of Scripture uh, to, to motivate them to edify and build them up in the faith. And then uh, not just edification, but exhortation. Exhortation is encouragement. And so not only do you, you feel kind of the conviction sometimes, but you feel the encouragement. As they, as they preach the word of God, uh, you feel that encouragement to keep serving Christ, to keep doing what you ought to be doing, or maybe to get back on the right road and do it. Uh, and, and, uh, and maybe to, to confess and repent and turn back to the Father uh, and, and follow his path. That encouragement in that way. And then comfort. Comfort, knowing uh, that there is a God who gives us the power and the ability by his Holy Spirit to function as he wants us to. And this, uh, this prophet proclaims the message of, of Scripture in that bold way. You know, I, I had it in my mind. I was going to get through all these. I don't know why I do it. Anyway, I have the gift of preaching, and I just... <laughs> I don't know if I, anyway, that's up to the Lord. But um, this gift must be tested. It must be tested. Just because an individual says, I have the gift of prophecy, I have a message from the Lord for you. That does not confirm that that individual has a gift of prophecy or that God is speaking through them. This gift, because it claims the authority of God himself, must be tested. And so how do we, how do we know that? Well, the Bible says it clearly. Look at, uh, uh, let's look at verse 37 in this chapter, 1 Corinthians 14 and verse 37. The Apostle Paul, speaking to the church at Corinth, uh, a lot of them wanted the gifts of tongues. He said, no, you ought to be pursuing the gift of prophecy, uh, really. And, and then, um, and, and by the way, uh, do I say it here in verse, back in, in chapter 12, verse 28, there is an order to first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, after that miracles, healings, government, diversity of tongues. <laughs> so tongues at the bottom of the list. Uh, prophecy is near the top. Uh, there's something of an order there, and that's important to note as well. But uh, back to chapter 14, verse 37, it says, If any man, verse 37, if any man think of himself to be a prophet or spiritual, let him acknowledge that the things that I write unto you are the commandments of the Lord. A prophet will acknowledge the word of God. A prophet will say, this is what the Bible says. And the Apostle Paul has, given, has been given the words of Scripture. He's writing them out for us today, and we have them now. A prophet will agree with this book. A prophet will not say, well, I have, I have something new, something different. No, I don't think so. And if the message cannot be confirmed in Scripture, then there is no reason for you to acknowledge it as a gift of prophecy. It must have its foundation in Scripture. And the gift of prophecy must be tested by Scripture. It's very important to, uh, to recognize that. Uh, this is a, a unique gift, um, but it must be tested. It must be tested. Okay, exhortation, and, uh, and we'll, we'll wrap it up with this. And next time, get into some of these offices. Um, and the tongues as well. So uh, let's look at exhortation. In Romans chapter 8, we see exhortation. Romans chapter 8. It's not included in the, gift, uh, in the list in 1 Corinthians, uh, but we do see this gift in 
Romans 12. And some would say this would be uh, similar to other gifts, maybe prophecy. Um, and so, depending on how you list that out. But let's, let's uh, take it today as a, a separate gift altogether. Romans 12, verse number 8. The Bible says, Or he that exhorteth on exhortation. So there's a gift right there. Of course, this is listed separately in the same list, separately than prophecy. So exhortation, this, the word exhortation is to come alongside, it's to encourage, encourage. This is a speaking gift. This is a gift uh, where you would encourage somebody, come along, lift them up, help them along, uh, and encourage them to continue serving the Lord or to get back on track, track and start serving the Lord. This isn't a preaching ministry necessarily, but I think a lot of you in this room have this gift of exhortation where you, you are gifted to see those needs and to come along somebody and kind of put your arm around them and say, hey, let's walk together. Let's do this for God and encourage someone uh, to, to follow after the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, this exhortation we see even displayed in Jesus, how many times he would come along to his disciples and give them a little special attention, a little special instruction, and say, no, this is what you need to do, guys. You're, kind of, you're missing the point here. And he'd bring them along. And even when he's giving the Great Commission, you know, he's exhorting, he's an, encouraging the disciples to do what he had been doing, to reach the world with the gospel. And so to exhort, uh, we see another example. This is uh, Barnabas. Barnabas was a great encourager. Uh, in the New Testament. Let's just quickly look at Acts chapter 11 and we'll wrap it up here. Acts chapter 11. Well, we'll almost wrap it up there. Uh, okay. <laughs> I know, it's 12.02. I'm almost done. Acts chapter uh, 11. <clears throat> and uh, in this passage, we see Barnabas, who seems to have this gift of exhortation, this gift of encouraging. Uh, it was because of Barnabas that the Apostle Paul got the start in the ministry that he had, which is amazing when you consider that God uh, used the Apostle Paul to write most of the New Testament that we study today. And so had it not been for God using Barnabas with his gift of exhortation, perhaps we may not have the New Testament as we have it today. Now, we can't go backwards and play that game, I understand. But it's neat to see how God puts things together. So here in, in Acts chapter 11... Uh, verse 22, verse 22, <clears throat> I think that's what I want. Yes, it is. They said, uh, Cornelius, the centurion, a just man. Am I in the right place here? That's 10. Sorry, that was chapter 10. Uh, here I am, chapter 11 now, 22. Then tidings of these things came to the ears of the church, which was in Jerusalem, and they sent forth Barnabas that he should go as far as Antioch, who when he came had seen the grace of God, was glad and exhorted them all that with purpose of heart they would cleave unto the Lord. He comes along and says, you guys, stick this out. You know, cleave to the Lord, cling to Him. Uh, verse 25, Then departed Barnabas to Tarsus for to seek Saul. And when he had found him, he brought him to Antioch. And it came to pass that a whole year... Uh, that a whole year they assembled themselves with the church and taught much people, and the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. So here we have Barnabas. He goes along and he, and he finds Saul, who would be Paul, and encourages him along, uh, and uh, they walk together, and they're in the church together, serving the Lord together. And through his ministry of encouragement, the Apostle Paul gets his start in his ministry. A, a great gift, and I think... This speaking gift is one that, uh, that many people have, and I think you can, uh, you can find a lot of ways to do this. Through the singing of God's Word, maybe it's a special music, playing a special instrument, maybe writing notes to somebody, just giving them a special word of encouragement, maybe sending a little text message, you know, you get on Messenger or whatever it is, I don't know. But, but you share a special word of encouragement with somebody or see somebody at church and you say, you know, they look down, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to encourage them today. Let God use you 
And you allow that gift of exhortation to bring glory to God in the church. All right, uh, we're going to stop here. And uh, so you have to bring this paper back next time, okay? So uh, fold that, put it in the, in the Bible, bring it back next time, and we'll continue this uh, walk through of these spiritual gifts um, as we look at these. Uh, I, I want to just close with this thought from 1 Peter, where we kind of started everything. And, uh, and we'll wrap it up here. 1 Peter chapter 4, uh, the Bible says this, uh, we saw in verse 11, If any man speak, let him speak as of the oracles of God. If any man minister, let him do it as of the ability which God giveth. Here it is, that God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. God, we give you praise and glory. We lift you up. We magnify your name. And I pray that as we explore these gifts, these speaking gifts, that you would move in our hearts, that we would be actively using these gifts to bring glory to you, Father, and to edify the church around us. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.